Today we're going to compact the sand. We looked at renting a compactor and they're stupid expensive for a vibratory plate compactor. I think it was like $260 for one day. Frankly, that's a bit rich just to run a compactor over this small pole barn. So we engaged some concrete guys from the local area and they'll compact it as part of helping to pour the concrete. We've got one of them coming over today. Concrete is one of those things that I don't trust myself to do. Yeah, we did the footings. They're, they're six foot underground and no one can see them. So if they look like cottage cheese, um, I don't really care uh, as long as they're structurally sound. But for throwing this much concrete, leveling it, smoothing it, installing a drain, getting the right gradient, not making a mess, even ordering the right amount of concrete, I don't trust myself. Maybe after this pour we will learn enough to try it in the future. Or maybe we'll learn enough to never want to do it ever. In any case, we are hiring this part out and I'm happy with that decision. Everything else we'll do ourselves. So I, I don't anticipate hiring out other aspects of it. Uh, we might get some help to raise the trusses up, but that's, that's really just someone coming in here with a telehandler. Anyway, today we compact or we watch a contractor compact. The whole insulated area here is compacted and graded. The drain vent is installed and we've excavated a small area here where we're going to put a footing pad. In case we ever want to add a loft in here, this footing pad can be used to support a header along with the two end columns. We don't anticipate using it, but now's the time to put it in. So we're gonna do so. Today, we're gonna start by putting down our vapor barrier we have six mil plastic, 20 by 100 roll. We'll lay out a couple 20s um, side by side.
No. You just did that, didn't you, Ro? Yeah, I saw you. I saw you. That was naughty. That was very naughty. Don't give me that face. I know a naughty dog when I see one. So we're done with our vapor barrier. We put down the six mil plastic, cutting around the columns and any penetrations. We use duct tape to hold stuff in place, not to seal it, just to prevent the plastic from moving around too much. For example, a little piece there tacking the two sheets together. As an owner builder, the vapor barrier slab thing has been very confusing. Half the information I read says that you have to seal everything, that you can't leave any exposed spaces because that will let moisture through. But the other half says you can have holes everywhere and it's not a big deal that a vapor barrier is not an air barrier and that holes don't really matter. So we took the latter advice for this and allowed holes or gaps or seams on pretty much everywhere. I think that's okay. We're gonna be putting foam on top of this and taping that foam. And someone said to us, well, don't worry about taping your vapor barrier because you're gonna tape your foam. And I don't think that makes sense either. XPS foam, I believe, is vapor permeable. Taping that will not prevent moisture from traveling from one space to the other. My understanding is that taping the insulation will only prevent concrete from penetrating into the insulation between the panels and degrading the performance of the insulation, and that there's no real other reason to tape it. Concrete itself will be the air barrier. Again, I'm not an expert in the slightest, just trying to figure this all out on my own. And I feel like we're making some good choices.